Hello everybody and welcome to another A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough video. In this video we're going to be looking at buffers. This is something that's been requested by a few people and so I've picked a 15 mark question for us to take a look at today and within that question we'll be prioritising pH calculations for buffers but also looking a little bit at buffer action as well. As ever I'll be writing my thoughts down in blue and the bits of content that will actually get you the marks, they're going to be written down in green. For A-level chemistry, you're only going to be asked to calculate the pH of weak acid buffers. So it's really common for the question to have some contextual information at the beginning describing weak acids of some sort. And that's exactly what they do here. They begin by talking to us about a particular weak acid, ethanoic acid, and they give us the acid dissociation constant Ka for ethanoic acid here in moles per decimeter cubed at 25 degrees C. And then they give us the Ka expression. Now, sometimes they actually give you a mark for writing the Ka expression. Occasionally, that's part A of a buffer question to write the expression for Ka for ethanoic acid, but it isn't here, they're giving it for us to use. And the last bit of contextual information is really helpful. It's a reminder that pHs need to be represented to two decimal points for whatever pH that you've calculated. Now, the first part of the question is only about weak acids. It's not actually about buffers, but it's, it's a common question, so it's worth looking at here. They've asked us to write an expression for the term pH. Sometimes instead of that, they ask us to define pH. They both actually mean the same thing. They want us to write down the fact that pH is equal to the negative log of H+. So even though they're asking for uh, an expression or a definition, they just want that equation that should hopefully be firmly drilled into your memory by now. Then the second part of this question is to calculate the pH of a particular concentration of ethanoic acid. And that will be the remainder of these three marks that we've got. Now, as we know, we've already been given the Ka expression, but there's an extra level of thought to this. And this comes from the fact that when weak acids dissociate, and I'll show this at the bottom. So if weak acids HA, when they dissociate, they only do it partially. And so we get H plus and A minus, and it is a reversible reaction that will be at equilibrium. And the value for Ka tells us the position of this equilibrium, and it's usually dramatically favouring the left-hand side. It's very far to the left. So the thing about pure weak acids, when they are pure, there will be an exactly equal amount of HA from the acid, as there is A minus, the conjugate base, or sometimes it's referred to as the salt, but it's most typically the conjugate base. And so, since they are present in equal amounts, we can make a declaration, and that declaration is that H plus is equal to the ethanoate ion, that's this second ion here. And what that gives us permission to do is to simplify this expression. You can see that H plus is on the top, and so is ethanoate also on the top. Well, if they're both the same thing, why don't we just write H plus and square it? And that's exactly what we do. So Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by the ethanoic acid concentration, which goes on the bottom. And so that gets us our second mark here. You probably actually don't need to say both of those two things. We're going to get a mark for either of those two declarations. Then the third mark will be for substituting these values in. We in fact only need two values now. We need our Ka, which we've got here, and we've got the concentration of the ethanoic acid here. So once we rearrange the Ka expression, we get H plus squared is equal to Ka multiplied by the ethanoic acid concentration, and then H plus is the square root of that product. And so, then we plug our numbers in and we get the square root of 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by 0 0.15, which then comes out at 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3. And as we've already declared at the top here, pH is negative log of H+. plus. So we just need to take the negative log of our hydrogen ion concentration that we've calculated, and that gives us a pH 
of 2.79 to two decimal places. Now they've set the scene with a weak acid calculation, they're going to move on to buffer solutions for the rest of this question. And so we begin by being asked to explain what is meant by the term a buffer solution. And we've got two marks for this. And this is a nice stock response that you can remember, that buffers are a solution which resists slight changes in pH. And this is when small amounts of acid or base or water are added. I think it's worth mentioning the subtlety of the first marking point here is that buffers resist slight changes in pH or they maintain the pH of a particular solution. They won't completely resist the change. What buffers do is they significantly limit the impact. And so if a buffer had a pH of 2.79, for instance, and we added something to that buffer, it might drop the pH to maybe 2.73 or something like that. So small changes, but it won't keep it fixed at a particular pH indefinitely, as we'll see in the questions that are coming up. The final question on this page is to write an equation to show how buffers act when hydrochloric acid is added to the buffer solution. Sometimes you might be asked to describe how a solution can act like a buffer in a particular situation, and that might be a one, two, or maybe even a three mark question here. So they're only actually giving us one mark here, and they're being very specific in that they want an equation. So before we write the equation, let's remind ourselves what we've got in our buffer. We've got the ethanoic acid, and obviously as the acid component of the buffer, that will step in and react with any base that gets added to the buffer solution. And that's not the situation here. Remember, hydrochloric acid is being added. The other component is the sodium ethanoate, which can be shown like this. Or since it is highly soluble, that's one of the features that we need from this part of the buffer, we could just simply represent it with the conjugate base or the salt component as shown like so. And that's obviously what's going to kick in when an acid is added, which brings us back to what this question is asking us about. We've added hydrochloric acid, which we can symbolize here as H+, because in the ionic equation, the chloride ions remain in solution as spectator ions, so they won't be included. Then, since this has been added, the buffer component that will react with it is, as I say, the, the conjugate base or the salt, and so it's pretty clear what's going to happen now that the H plus is going to combine with that ion and we're going to increase the quantity of ethanoic acid that is present in this buffer solution slightly. And we're going to decrease slightly the concentration of the conjugate base shown here. And we explore the impact of those small changes in the amount of ethanoic acid or the conjugate base in this remaining question where we're focusing on the pH calculations. The first part of the question is absolutely delightful and I hope we get a question like this for buffers this year because it's the very nice straightforward form of buffer pH calculation that is almost so easy you think it might be a trick and it's really not. And that's why it's only worth three marks. So they've asked us to calculate the pH of the buffer solution. So remember that that means the final step is going to be to take the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. And that means that the other two marks are how do we get that hydrogen ion concentration? And so we've been given in the question two pieces of data. We've been given the ethanoic acid concentration, which we represent like so. And we've been given the sodium ethanoate concentration and remember, we don't really care about the sodium, and so we just write it as the ethanoate ion, like so. We were given the Ka expression earlier in the question, so I'll just paste it in here. And we were given the value for Ka as well, so we've actually got the three bits of data that we need. So what we need to do now is we need to rearrange this expression to make H plus the subject. So that is Ka multiplied by the ethanoic acid concentration, and then divided by the ethanoate concentration. And then it's just a case of plugging in the numbers to this expression and then getting our value for H+. Plus. And when you do that, you get a value of 2.61 times 10 to the minus 5. And then when you take the negative log of that to find the pH, you get 4.58 to two decimal places. 
it's worth pointing out here, just to make sure we fully understand, that the pH of a buffer that's been made up with a particular acid, say ethanoic acid, like here, the pH that it has only depends on the ethanoic acid concentration and the ethanoate concentration. Now, since the units of concentration are both moles per decimeter cubed, then actually the buffer's pH only depends on the relative proportions of those two chemicals. Not really how much specifically there is, but actually their proportions, which is why, even though I've drawn this line here all the way along, on the right-hand side, when I've substituted the numbers in, I've just put the concentration of one of them above the concentration of the ethanoate. And so that means that if we had a concentration of 0.15 and 0.10, we would have a buffer with a pH of 4.58. But if the concentrations were, say, tripled to 0.45 on the top and 0.3 on the bottom, the buffer's pH would be exactly the same because it is a 3 to 2 ratio in terms of this fraction. And so that's really all that affects the pH of a particular buffer, the proportion of the acid to the conjugate base or salt. And then the final part of this question is the biggie. It's five marks out of our 15 marks on acids and bases. And that's quite standard in an A-level chemistry question to have a really long question about acids and bases that finishes up with buffers. And so five marks is a lot of our paper. So we need to make sure we really are understanding what they're asking us to do here. So first up, they've told us that a portion of hydrochloric acid has been added to our buffer. They've given us a concentration and they've given us a volume. So the very first thing that we should do, and to be honest, if we can't think of what else to do, we must work out the moles of hydrochloric acid by doing concentration times by volume. Remember, the volume needs to be in cubic decimeters. So we're doing one for the concentration multiplied by 0 0.01 for the volume, and that's going to give us 1 times 10 to the minus 2 moles, or 0 0.01 moles of hydrochloric acid. Then we need to just dive a little bit deeper into the question. They've told us we've got a thousand centimeters cubed of the buffer solution, or more importantly, one cubic decimeter of that buffer. What that allows us to do without them telling us that we're doing it is that allows us to take these concentrations that we were told about earlier in the question and just take them as moles. Because if we've got a concentration of 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed and we've got one decimeter cubed of it, that will be 0.15 moles. And so we'll have 0.15 moles of ethanoic acid and we'll have 0.1 moles of sodium ethanoate. To help us progress with the rest of this calculation, I think it's just important to take a pause to refresh our memories about buffer action. So if we imagine that we've got a buffer with the two separate components, H, A and A minus, and we're going to add some chemicals to that buffer, well, remember our two options are we can add an acid, which is going to be H plus. We might, for instance, add X moles of H plus. That H plus that we've added wouldn't react with the acid because acids wouldn't react with acids typically. So it will react with the base part of the buffer. And so the base part of the buffer will go down the exact same amount as the acid moles that were added. So it will go down by X moles. And when A minus reacts with H plus from the acid, we are going to make HA when they combine together. And so what that means is the HA moles will go up and it will go up again by the exact same amount, X moles, however many moles of H plus we'd added. The exact same thing can be said about adding a base. So we've added some OH minus in the form of sodium hydroxide. Let's say we've added Z moles of sodium hydroxide. Well, this time the added base will react with the acid. Very, very logical it would do so. So the acid will be reduced in quantity by the exact amount of OH minus that we added. So it will go down by Z moles. What's going to be made when OH minus reacts with HA? Well, the H from the HA reacts as H plus and it reacts with the OH minus to make water. And so the A minus will be left by itself. And so we're going to have more A minus than we started with. How much more? Z moles. 
So you can see there's a nice compensation relationship. When you add acid, the amount of conjugate base goes down and the amount of acid goes up. Nice and logical. When you add base, the acid goes down and the A- minus conjugate base goes up. Again, logical. And this is exactly the kind of thinking that we need to have to unpick the rest of this question, because we know how many moles of ethanoic acid we're starting with, 0.15. We know that we're adding HCl, acid, and we know how many moles we're adding, so the ethanoic acid is going to go up. So the moles of ethanoic acid after we've added the HCl is going to be 0.15 plus 0.01, and that's going to give us 0.16 moles. And similarly, but the opposite direction, the conjugate base is going to react. It's going to get used up during this addition. And so we've got 0 0.10 moles at the beginning. It's going to go down. We're going to use up 0 0.01 moles of it. And that's going to leave us with 0 0.09 moles of ethanoate ions after the addition of the HCl. And that's something to look out for in a question like this. When you are adding something to a buffer, one of the chemicals is going to go up, so you're going to have a, a, an increase in moles, and the other chemical is going to go down by the exact same amount in each case. So now we've got our moles after addition, and so we need to refer ourselves back to the Ka expression that we've got up at the top, and we need to rearrange it to make H plus the subject of that equation, because we ultimately want to calculate our pH, so we need to find H plus. And so for the fourth mark, we need to substitute values into this calculation. So the Ka is the same as it's always been, 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5. And then even though we're using these square brackets, which is the correct way to write the expression, we don't actually need to account for the volume. And that's because there would be a divide by the volume on the top and a divide by the volume on the bottom, and the volumes would cancel each other out. So we can just substitute mole values in to this expression. And that's the calculation as I've shown here. And once you crunch those numbers into your calculator, you will get our H plus concentration of 3.09 times 10 to the minus 5. And we've definitely done the hard stuff by now. We've got four of our five marks. The final mark is the nice, easy negative log of H plus, which will give us 4.51 to two decimal points. It's worth just saying something about error carried forward or transferred error. If you forgot to do one of these two steps here, and maybe you remembered that the acid would go up, but you didn't remember that the base would go down, you would probably, you would obviously lose this mark. You might well lose the second mark, but you would get a transferred error mark for an incorrect pH. So you still could get as many as three of those five marks. Okay, that's the end of this buffer calculations question walkthrough. I will do more buffer calculations because they do tend to be the more difficult type of pH calculations. But if you've got any other requests, then do make a suggestion in the discussion or the comments because I want to make videos that are useful for people. Okay, that's all for now. I'll see you next time.